It's August 23rd, 2023. After completing its excruciating journey lasting over 40 days, ISRO's Chandrayaan-3 has successfully completed the soft landing on the south pole of the moon with its Vikram lander. With this achievement, India's ISRO has become the first country ever to accomplish this feat. But how did an organization that once transported rockets on bicycles manage to reach this milestone? Welcome to a century of stories brought to you by IDFC First Bank. Always you first. I am Kunal Vijaykar and this is the story of India's pride. The Indian Space Research Organization or ISRO. It was the 1960s, a decade when global theatre was ignited by the Cold War. The global space race was in full throttle. American President John F. Kennedy had announced to Congress that America was going to the moon. On the other hand, the USSR had successfully placed Sputnik, the first ever artificial satellite in low Earth orbit. The United Nations was offering scholarships to budding space programs to further accelerate space exploration. Meanwhile, a young scientist from Ahmedabad was relentlessly urging the Indian government to seize this global opportunity and embark on India's very own journey into the depths of space. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the man responsible for India's first successful rocket launch, and the visionary who established the Indian Institute of Management, IIM, was now fueled by the ambition of establishing India's very own Space Exploration Agency. He got to work. Dr. Sarawai, along with other scientific minds of his time, understood the potential held by space exploration. He could envision the value it could create for the people of India. He knew that space science and social development go hand in hand. With a sharp mind and his heart in the right place, he drafted a proposal to be presented to Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. Initially, the proposal was met with hesitation. After all, India was a developing country at that time with serious issues such as poverty, food shortages, income inequality and social justice confronting us. How then? Could a government justify allocating precious resources to a newfound science like space exploration? What could we say to those hungry for food, mothers seeking shelter, and children longing for education? Dr. Sarabhai, a genius, anticipated these questions. He argued that space research is as much a science for the present as it is for the future. He explained how placing a satellite in Earth's orbit helps us measure and accurately predict weather patterns which would aid farmers in planning their harvest cycles. He described how gaining a better understanding of the moon would help us learn more about ocean tidal waves, improving seafaring and fishing. He elaborated on how advancements in rocket technology could enhance the protection of India's sovereignty more effectively. The Prime Minister was convinced and the Indian National Committee for Space Research or INCOSPAR was established in 1962 with Vikram Sarabhai appointed as its first chairman. India was on its way to becoming a space power. Dr. Sarabhai assembled a team of capable and brilliant scientists, anthropologists, communicators and social scientists from all corners of the country to lead the Indian space program. After successfully launching the first sounding rocket on November the 21st, 1963, the melody of India's space saga began. India embarked on an odyssey, a journey into the stars. There was no turning back now. Work began in full swing, one project after another. These scientific minds were learning new things every day, bolstering India's progress. In 1969, INCOSPAR was renamed ISRO 
and in 1972, it was brought under the newly created Department of Space in the Government of India. But now, ISRO had to prove its mettle. It had to substantiate the claims made by Dr. Sarabhai and demonstrate that space research could indeed contribute to national development. But how? The unwavering genius of Dr. Sarabhai once again had a moment of brilliance. SITE, short for Satellite Instructional Television Experiment, was announced. The plan was to utilize existing satellite infrastructure from countries like the USA and broadcast an informative television program to the people of India. Programs like Krishi Darshan and other development-related content were broadcast to over 200,000 people covering 2,400 villages in six states. SITE or SITE was hailed as the largest sociological experiment in the world during 1975-76 and it is credited for having trained 50,000 science teachers in primary schools in a single year. So far, ISRO had launched its own sounding rocket, used satellites to broadcast educational information to India and conducted several experiments to improve the telecommunication sector in collaboration with the Post and Telegraph's department. However, all of this was accomplished using technology created outside the country, relying on pre-existing satellites and communication systems. Now, it was time to become Atmanirbhar. ISRO developed its first ever indigenous artificial satellite, Aryabhatta, and launched it into space using a Soviet launcher. This opened doors to a whole new chapter in ISRO's journey, making them more self-reliant and capable of developing the necessary technology at home. Over time, ISRO became incredibly proficient in creating affordable, accessible and replicable technology for space endeavors. From becoming the first agency to detect traces of water on the moon with the Chandrayaan-1 mission, to setting a world record by launching an astonishing 104 satellites all at once using the PSLV rocket, and now bringing home the glory of being the first country to land on the South Pole of the moon. The achievements and accomplishments of ISRO are countless. Through its success, ISRO has answered the much-debated question, why do we go to space if we have problems on Earth? The story of ISRO reminds us that to ask this question today, a caveman had to step out of his cave and explore the unexplored. It takes the courage to look beyond the sufferings of everyday life and find solutions to the problems that plague us. The success of ISRO has significantly impacted our everyday life from using GPS and predicting weather patterns to watching television and even using our cell phones. All of this became possible because someone chose to look beyond. This is Kudal Vijayka and you have just listened to A Century of Stories brought to you by IDFC First Bank. Always you first. In the next episode, I will tell you the story of the father of India's green revolution, M.S. Swaminathan.